Hello and welcome back to The Notes, coming to you once again from our offices here in New York. As we all know, many people doubt the kind of gains we've had in the market over the last two years. Multiples have expanded uh, and the gains have been remarkably consistent. Therefore, many people think that we're bound to see a correction before much longer. But the question that needs to be answered is what exactly is going to cause such a correction? Why should stocks get cheaper from where they are here? That's the question I'd like to discuss today with uh, my guest, who is Morgan Stanley's chief U.S. equity strategist, Adam Parker. Adam, thanks very much for joining sure, me thanks today. Thanks for having me. Now, let's start with this chart that you produced. We've only had, as I understand it, three periods uh, since the war when multiples have expanded as far and as fast as they have in the last couple of years. What tends to happen after you've had that kind of multiple expansion? You're right. We looked and saw in the last 40 years, we've only seen uh, what we call three turns of multiple expansion uh, uh, three times. This is the fourth period now. What's happened over the last two years is the multiple's gone from 12 times forward earnings for the S&P to about 15.1 times. And so we want to say, okay, when we have that kind of move, what happens following that? And we admit sample size is only three, but in all three instances, the market continued to rally for the next 12 months. In two of the three, it actually worked 13 through 24 months afterward. So there can be more momentum than maybe people expect, and uh, the, the rally can last a little bit longer based on history. Okay, now I, I guess the two main bear points that get made at this point in the discussion are, first of all, look at the economy. It might be growing a bit, but it's still very sluggish, doesn't seem to be uh, underpinning anything very special. And secondly, look at the margins that companies are making. They look cyclically high and people expect them to revert to the mean. I mean, how, how can you deal with those, those issues? I think it's pretty clear here in the U.S. anyway that what's good for the economy isn't necessarily good for corporate margins and vice versa. We've seen that trend for a couple of years. It's pretty incongruous. So my sense is um, that the base case is just kind of mediocre, low growth, modest margin expansion but that the bear case isn't that likely. And what seems to be causing the multiple expansion is the lack of the bear case, not the, not the base case itself. Oh, so let's be clear about this. Where, what exactly would the bear case involve? Are we talking about a, a, a collapse in, uh, or a collapse, a significant fall in earnings compared to what we're expecting? What, what, what I think, do you think in order for the market to pull back meaningfully, kind of a double digit pullback, people would have to be afraid about a big decline in earnings. The three big risks in my mind are one, the emerging markets and emerging markets demand. We've seen that from some of the companies that have reported recently, Cisco, IBM, Unilever in Europe. We've seen some of that. So the question is, is that kind of just the surface being scratched or is that something we hear more about in the first couple of quarters next year? The second issue would be around uh, Fed policy and maybe the bubble is in the belief in the policymakers, right? And so I, I personally believe that they can distinguish between tapering and tightening and they will do, but that could be choppy. I mean, that wasn't the story this year, right? People, people heard when, when, when Ben Bernanke said tapering, everybody heard tightening and you've got a dramatic tightening in the bond market. You think that the Fed can get the, the, the signaling right next time? I think they will learn from that experience. They have a different person in place, Yellen, not Bernanke. They've come out with some papers recently talking about uh, uh, employment and how that's important for tightening. So I think they will do a much better job. In fact, I think you're actually fighting the Fed if you don't think they can distinguish between the two. And then just quickly, the third potential risk besides EM and tapering tightening distinction would just be on Europe and whether people believe the path toward the fiscal union is in place and whether the stronger euro actually makes people more worried about the recovery there. Yes, certainly Euro, Europe continues to be a source of concern, even if rather pleasantly it hasn't done anything scary, scary this year. Yeah. One final question that interests me is, is how do you gauge the, the sentiment on, among sell-side analysts? You've produced this fascinating chart, which as I understand it shows that analysts are more in agreement uh, than at any point since the, the figures started in the, uh, in the 70s. Uh, are they always institutionally too bullish, or why are they now more in agreement than before? Well, there's two kind of points to your question. One is, yes, the sell side analysts typically are too optimistic. On average, uh, in January of any given year, they think the earnings growth is going to be 14% for that year, and then the actual growth turns out to be 6 I think that investors know the sell side analysts are too optimistic, and they're used to that downward revision, so it's not necessarily a concern. The second part of your question is about the dispersion or how kind of wide uh, of a yeah. band do the estimates have. Uh, I think it's a sign that there just isn't that much volatility in the outlook because there's not much spending happening from companies, hiring, capital spending, et cetera. Certainty is usually good and usually people pay a premium for certainty. So I'm not necessarily thinking it's a giant group think that's going on. I think it's more a reaction to the fact that there isn't a lot of cost put in place that could cause volatility to the outlook. Okay, Adam, thank you very much Pleasure. for, Thanks a lot. for joining me today. I think the message, messages from this are fairly clear. 
None of this is a big argument for a really strong further bull market from here. There's no, not necessarily any reason to get very excited about stocks at this point. But it is a, quite a strong case that the bears must recognize that a lot of things need to go wrong for the market to fall much from here.